That's pretty good looking, isn't it? You wouldn't even really know that it was a 3D printed wall hook, would ya? Hey everybody, so my wife challenged me to make a wall hook because we needed one with these little hooks that we can put things and hang them up in the kitchen. And she didn't need it very big, this was about the size that she was looking for. But uh, whereas any reasonable sane person would have made this out of wood, or perhaps just went and purchased one, I decided, you know, I'll give 3D printing a shot to see how well this works. Now I'll talk a little bit about the production of this and how I made it look as good as I did after I talk a little bit about how I modeled this. Yup, Blender. What was I thinking making this in Blender? This would have been a better job to use uh, uh, Fusion 360 or <laughs> anything else for, but no. I use Blender for it. Now, Blender does have some capability of doing this. This main body here, I was able to use the bevel command to give it the right shape. I wasn't able to use the bevel tool for this, the, the bevel modifier, because I wanted to uh, uh, have this little ridge up here and it would have been difficult to aim the bevel modifier properly. So it's it's a geometry hack instead of a modifier hack. Now, Blender also has the array modifier, which you can see, there it is over there. Um, and this array modifier allowed me to make just one of these little holes for the interface of the hook and then multiply it four times. And let me, I used the bool tool, so it turned it off. Let me turn it back up to being a uh, a solid here. So these four of them come from using the modifier tool. That way I can get them evenly spaced and I only have to edit one of them and then put them all there. Let's put this back to bounds and come out and you can see those holes. Uh, well, you can see them now <laughs> in there. Now these holes were of course designed with 45 degree angles so that they would print well on an FFF 3D printer. Um, however, it wasn't until after printing that I noticed I made a little boo-boo here. This last one goes just a little bit too far over the edge. And so really I maybe should decrease my my offset by possibly even just a tenth. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that. What happens if I drop it all the way down to 47? That looks about right. Let me eyeball it with the front. Uh, maybe even a little bit less. Uh, let's say 46.7, 46.5. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so I've just fixed the problem that you're going to see in the print. Now, for the hook, oh, this is the little nub that goes into the holes for the screws. For the hook, I, I did something interesting. First of all, this hook is just a cube that's been modified and rotated and mirrored and then uh, uh, mesh smooth to look good. And now that I've actually printed it out, I had a lot of trouble getting this to print out. And the best thing that I found to print it, to, to make it print successfully was to take it and rotate it, tilt it up a little bit so that this hook wasn't laying this flat so much, but that it was standing up more and just put a bunch of supports underneath it, which this design obviously was gonna need supports anyway. So printing it at an angle finally made this succeed. But um, now that I've done it and now that I've printed it, I wonder why didn't I just turn the hook down, make this be the flat surface that it prints on? It would have needed no supports whatsoever. True, it would have had a flat side to this, but I could have sanded those edges down a little bit. And when I smoothed them, it would have looked exactly like what I was looking for. And I would have had a lot less trouble printing it. Honestly, this hook is what prevented me from, from getting this out sooner because I, I just could not. And even the prints, they have some little fail points. I don't know if you can see these in the camera, but it just did not work very well. So looking back or, or, or looking forward now, I feel like I could iterate this design and make it a little bit better, but um, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about how I made this and how I printed this and how I made it look good. So. The hooks are printed in ASA 
filament and then smoothed out with acetone so that they get that nice shiny painted metal look or formed plastic but either way it looks close enough to the real thing that I don't think anybody's going to realize when they look twice now you can see the mistake here that this one is dangling off the edge a little bit too far and if I pop it out you can see that yeah there's there's that gap there so I probably should reprint this whole thing, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. The The back was printed in cork fill, and I, I have to admit that this project was part of the reason why I even considered getting wood fill or cork fill. Uh, this is why I decided to go with cork fill instead of just regular wood fill. Now this is printed just about as wide as the build plate on my Replicator 2 could handle. but. Now I've got some interesting questions. Think about this for a second. If I, I made this for me, it's just a silly little thing that I'm doing, but I really should release the STLs, shouldn't I? Uh, you want to have them, possibly. It's a useful print, but which STLs do I release? Obviously, you're not going to get this STL because I've already fixed the holes so that that's not a problem. So that's one change. Should I go ahead and try and make the improved hooks that I talked about? Should I print them out before I upload them? Should I test them before I put them out there? Or should I just put them out there the way that they are? The truth is, I have what I need. Why should I bother iterating it for you? Other than the fact that I'm a nice guy and I probably will. But I'm not going to print them out and try them out. See, this is, this is part of the thing when people say, hey, you should share your STLs and you should put them out there. They don't realize there's a lot of work and thought and effort that goes into sharing your STLs. You don't just throw them out there. Or you do. But if you're responsible and if you have a 3D printer, plus you got to take pictures of them and you do the test prints and you share your settings and everything like that, it's not as easy just to say, hey, share your STL files, especially nowadays with so many things being uploaded every day, you can't, you can't compete unless you put a little bit of effort into it. And I'm competing for free. Do I really want to do that? Now, of course, I'm going to do that. But when people say, hey, you should share your STL files, these are, these are the considerations that go into the thought. And I wanted you to, to get a little mind for that. Um, be kind when you ask for people's STLs. Realize that there's, there's a lot of effort that goes into sharing STLs. But if you want to have this, I will have multiple different versions with different sizes so that you can print it out on your 3D printer that might not be as big as this one. I'll try to even make it mini printable and I'll have the updated experimental hook. So if you want to try them out, you can do that. But here, here's a useful print for your home. Something that you can, you can do and and maybe impress people maybe not impress them maybe they'll just look at it and go hey it's a it's a 3d print or it's it's a wall hook and you'll go yeah it's a 3d printed wall hook anyways i want to thank you guys very much for watching as usual and thank my patreon supporters for backing me there's always room for more people on the tile wall there so thank you guys very much and if you want to support me there's links to follow but i appreciate the views even I want to thank you guys very much for watching and say safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here now for you. Buy it on Amazon.